Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about what is ASP.NET Core. But before we can discuss what ASP.NET Core is, let's talk a little bit about the history of ASP and ASP.NET. So back in 1996, the first introduction of ASP was introduced and it was continued to be developed all the way up through 2000. Now ASP is better known as classic ASP and it introduced server-side scripting to web pages to allow for dynamically created content. Up to that point, mostly all you could do with web pages was just display HTML code with some links to other pages and maybe have some colors for your fonts and that sort of thing. But ASP introduced server-side scripting to allow much more dynamic content. Later versions were able to communicate with libraries that were on the server, and it was also able to maintain data across pages. This meant that you could store some data that some user might have put in on one page and have it relate to another page. In 2002, ASP.NET was released, and ASP.NET is still going all the way up to the current time. It was first released with .NET Framework 1.0, and ASP.NET uses HTML-like markup to be interpreted by the server and then generate the dynamic content. Now, later versions used a code behind model where a page could call on some code that existed in a separate file that existed on the server and then display something based upon the decision making of that code. Later versions introduced master pages and a template engine, and this allowed for you to develop a master or template page and then put different components or different parts to your page inside of that template. This allowed for a lot more flexibility in the dynamic content. Now, one thing that ASP.NET required was for you to compile your code and then put those libraries up onto the server. This is different than just strictly HTML code where you could just simply have like a text file that was HTML with the HTML extension and just post it up and the server would host it. This compiled code required some sort of special interpreter that could read the dynamic link library and then allowed for a page to interact with that dynamic link library and that required the .NET framework to do that. Then along in 2009, ASP.NET MVC was first released, and it was really, its first inception was back in 2007. Now, MVC is built on the ASP.NET platform, but it utilizes a special model view controller development pattern. Now, the MVC, or model view controller pattern, is very prevalent on the web, especially for other languages like PHP. There's a lot of MVC frameworks out there but there really wasn't any MVC framework for ASP.NET. They were all more geared towards PHP. Although not specifically designed for the MVC pattern and for ASP.NET MVC, the Razor engine came about to really help bolster the view generation. It allowed for you to embed code right within the page. Rather than just having special tags that referred to code behind the pages, you could actually have code within the page itself. Now, later versions of ASP.NET MVC really emphasized multi-threading, especially MVC 5. One other tremendous thing about MVC was that it was released as open source, which left it open to the community to continue to develop and improve. Along with ASP.NET MVC, came another concept of ASP.NET Web API. Now the Web API platform operated very similarly to how MVC operated. Now the first Web API was introduced during the MVC4 cycle, and it was created to support RESTful services. Up to that point, WCF services were really the only framework that was offered by .NET to host data across the web. WCF was more SOAP based and really didn't offer a good platform for offering up RESTful services. Web API service was really designed and built around this RESTful service concept. Another big advantage to using the Web API was content negotiation, 
user of the web API could actually ask for what type of content it would receive back, either in JSON format or JavaScript object notation or XML format, extensible markup language. Web API was also able to support OData string queries, which is a very common query language on the web. Now let's talk about ASP.NET Core 1.0. ASP.NET Core 1.0, they really kind of threw out the old book. We kind of took everything that was in all of the old ASP and ASP.NET and ASP.NET MVC and threw out all the bad parts, started from scratch and tried to just keep the good things. And the result was that they were able to unify MVC with Web API, so that now MVC and Web API are really the same thing, and they work off of the same controller. One major upgrade, at least in my mind, to ASP.NET Core is that you no longer need to compile the code while you're developing. So you can make your changes in the code on the fly and just simply reload your browser to see how those changes affect your website. Now, probably the most impactful aspect of ASP.NET Core is that you can now easily run it on both Linux and Mac OS systems. So you no longer have to rely upon Windows IIS services to host your ASP.NET websites. You can run them on Linux and Mac OS. Now, ASP.NET Core 1.0 runs on a very stripped down version of the .NET framework. They essentially took out all of the unnecessary parts of the .NET framework that you can still find in 4.6, but they just limited it down in Core 1.0 to just those parts that were necessary in order to run this new version of MVC and Web API. It really is a brand new version of the .NET framework that was specifically oriented towards doing web development. Now, along with the major changes to the ASP.NET Core 1.0, came another pretty big change in the way that security was handled for the web applications. No longer can you use a custom attribute for your controllers. And I say that this is a new claims-based security policy, but that's not entirely accurate. Claims have actually been around for a while. It's just that they really emphasized claims much more along with the uh, this new concept of a principle in this security policy for ASP.NET identity. Now, along with this new release of ASP.NET Core is better integration with Node.js, which is a very widely distributed and well-known uh, framework for developing and hosting applications. Now, if you want to get more in-depth information about uh, what was going to be ASP.NET 5 and this new ASP.NET Core, uh, as well as a little bit about ASP.NET 4.6, I highly recommend that you read Scott Hanselman's blog here. And I'll be sure to post this link to this article in the description of this video, but it's well worth a read so you can see some of the differences. So that's the end of this presentation. In the next video, we'll talk about how to get ASP.NET Core on your Visual Studio instance.